All right, welcome to the second video uh, for Unit 4, Earth Systems and Resources. We're going to talk about soil formation and erosion here. Um, so to start, we look at weathering, and there's two types of weathering. There's physical weathering, and then there's chemical weathering. Physical weathering is just the mechanical breakdown of rocks and minerals. It can be caused by abiotic and biotic factors. Um, eventually, it leads to more an increase in surface area so water actually is a huge part of what makes this happen um, it's a really f interesting and kind of cool thing to look at because it does create phenomenal things like the Grand Canyon or this rock just suspended here it's a pretty interesting process um, weathering can also be chemical and this is where uh, nutrients from rocks are actually released and this is a very important part of the phosphorus cycle. If you remember the phosphorus cycle, it does not include the atmosphere. And so phosphorus has to come from uh, the rocks. And this is where we see a lot of the phosphorus stored in rocks. Well, without chemical weathering, we wouldn't get that phosphorus into the cycle and we would have a hard time uh, living. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, there's also anthropogenic chemical weathering, and this is what would be called human-caused. Remember, anthropogenic means human-caused. Uh, when fossil fuels combust, there are sulfur and nitrogen oxides released into the atmosphere. These react with the water vapor, creating a sulfuric acid, um, which is acid rain. So um, a big part of this is coal. Typically, coal plants um, produce a lot of this, and you get those pollutants into the air. You can also get it from natural sources like volcanoes, but once it's in the air, it reacts with the water to create acid and creates a deposition or acid deposition. There can also be dry deposition depending on if it reacts with water or not. So acid rain has a lot of effects. Um, there are people, I think, that would claim that acid rain, oh, you don't believe that's not real. That's How is that possible? And you have to remember that acid rain doesn't really exist a whole lot on the west coast where we live because we the prevailing wind in the united states goes from west to east so we don't have a lot of coal plants and a lot of of that pollution to the west of us where it would rise into the atmosphere and then fall as rain to us we get some but for the most part we don't really see it um some of the examples here you know limestone and marble the reason that the Statue of Liberty is green and not, you know, bright copper because that's what it's made out of is because of acid rain. It can cause impaired visibility. It can also hurt, uh, cause human health problems. So you get some examples of how it can hurt soil and trees. You know, more acid in the soil does not mean a good thing. It's, it's not always a good thing. Now, how does soil develop? There's two ways. It's from below and from above. So from below, the physical breakdown of rocks and primary materials, which can be newly exposed minerals, this gives you the raw material. And then from above, you get the deposition of organic material as, as organisms die, which creates more uh, nutrients for the weather, so, or for the soil. So you get an idea of here, an immature soil would have a lot of unweathered rock, whereas a more mature soil has three, la three layers where it has a good small amount of unweathered rock this would be your um, like the bedrock then your subsoil and then topsoil which is high in nutrients very nutrient rich now the older a soil is or the more mature it is it means it has more organic material so there's more nutrients but there are old soils that can be very nutrient poor because of the plants and water leaching nutrients so just because it is uh, old doesn't mean that it's great. So this is two examples, a young soil in North Carolina and an old soil in North Carolina. It's hard to tell the um, the horizons here. We'll talk about the horizons in a second. Not a whole lot of uh, chemicals, whereas in this older soil you can see the horizons. You can clearly see the organic layer. You can clearly see what's the alluviated layer and the B and the C. So older soils typically show more of the horizons. So the soil horizons, remember we did this activity where we made our own and then we ate it. Um, you have the A, 
uh, actually above the A is the O, organic. It's just not on this uh, diagram, but the organic layer is the very top. This is where your organic things are. A would be your topsoil, E is the alluviated area, B is your subsoil, C is the uh, below that with less nutrients and a little more uh, larger particle sizes, and then R would be your bedrock or your base. So the organic horizon, remember this is decomposed organic material, sometimes people call it humus, um, it's then the lower layer, and it's more pronounced in forests. You will find it in forests because there's a lot of decomposing organic material. The A horizon is the, so is the top soil. This would be your surface soil. It's organic mixed with minerals. This is where most of the biological activity occurs. So in this example, you see some grass. There's your top soil in here. Um, <clears throat> the E horizon does not always exist. It's in some acidic soils. This is where metals and nutrients are leached or alluviated. That's where they are brought down from above. This is like iron, aluminum, and organic acids. Um, the, or the alluviated sometimes can be very obvious, like in these examples, but sometimes it can be missing completely. And then the B horizon is the subsoil. This is where there are mostly minerals and nutrients. This is where all the, the, a lot of that accumulates. The C horizon is the least weathered. It's the most similar to the parent material, but it is still broken down and weathered, so you can actually still kind of get through it, and there are some nutrients. So this is just another um, diagram to show you. The O horizon, remember, very sh it's not very thick. It's not deep. Then the A horizon, the E, B, C, and then the R, or the unweathered parent material, or the bedrock. Now different biomes have different soil profiles. So for instance, in a deciduous, a temperate deciduous, you're gonna see a very different kind of soil horizon compared to a grassland, where the grassland has a huge A layer and then a very small B and then C. Um, desert soil, this is kind of us, right? The B layer is pretty thick still dry and doesn't have a whole lot of stuff going on. Notice there's no E layer here. An E layer exists in the tropical rainforest. An E layer exists here in um, forest soils, coniferous forests, especially coniferous. You notice it's a little bit larger in the coniferous than it is in some of these other ones. Um, pine trees, typically the pines are acidic themselves, so that's where a lot of that acid can come from. So if you guys remember the different services, um, ecosystem services, soil has its own. Uh, soil cycles nutrients, it provides a habitat, it can be a medium for engineering for humans. It also can store and filter water and allows an area for plants to grow. So that brings us to the end of the second video. Um, make sure you watch the third video when you're ready. And that will be coming up next.